Hello everybody, this is Mrs. Venti and welcome back to my channel. On this um, playlist, we are going to be doing grade 10 mathematical literacy. This is the first lesson of the first term of the year. So the first thing that we are going to look at is basically how to write numbers, number formats and number conventions. Our first lesson under this heading is decimal comma, decimal point and thousands separator. Now, a decimal number is a number that has got two parts. It has a whole number and it has a fraction. If we look at the number line drawn here, this dot is approximately one and a half. One whole and halfway between one and two. If we write it as a fraction, we would write it as one and a half. But the decimal way of writing it would be one comma five or now the whole number and the fraction part are separated by either a decimal comma or a decimal point so I can write it as one comma five or I can write it as one point five why do we have two different ways of writing a decimal it all depends on the country that you are in as to whether or not you use a comma or a point so we know that in South Africa, the Republic of South Africa, we use the comma to separate decimals. In America, the United States of America, they use a point. There are other countries that use it as well. It's just important for us to know the difference between using a decimal comma or a decimal point. Now, what do we mean about the thousands separator? So when we write a number that is bigger than a thousand, right, we are going to say, let's say we're writing the number 3,500. There are two different ways of writing it. In the USA, they would write the number 3, 500. And if we were to put the decimal there, the decimal would be 0 0.00. That is 3,500. If we were to write the same number in South Africa, we will write it as three space five zero zero comma zero zero. So there are different ways of writing a thousand. If we're writing a big number, then we will have to do the separation. So let's write a number like three million. Uh, 264,780. This is how we would write it in South Africa. 3 space 264 space 780. So in South Africa, we clump two, three numbers together, which is about a thousand. Every three digits go together and then there's a space in between and this makes it easier for us to be able to read it. This is what we mean by the thousand separator. Now if we were to make this a decimal then if we were to continue with what we have we would technically have a space here because we've got three digits together. So this space is followed by the tenths and the hundredths. So technically in this space here, we would have our comma, which shows that that's our decimal point. To the left of the decimal point, we have a whole numbers. To the right, we have portions of the number or percentage of the number. So let's put a percentage of two, three over there. What exactly does the two and the three mean? That is what we're gonna answer next. So on this one, we're looking at the fraction part of the number. Remember we said that a decimal represents a number that is a whole number and a part of a whole, a fraction, right? So if I had the fraction 8, 3, what exactly does 8, 3 mean? If I wrote it as a fraction, it would mean 8 wholes and 3 over 10. Where does this 10 come from? Remember that we said here that this here is a tenth and this here is a tenth. The first digit behind the decimal is a tenth. So if I have, let's assume we're working with money. So if I had eight rand and comma three, this means that I have eight times one rand coins and I've got three times ten 
cents coins. So this is eight holes and three tenths of a rand. If I had a rand and I divide it into 10 equal pieces, I'm only counting three of them. Each of the pieces will be 10 cents. Let's do another one. If I had one rand and 97 cents, this would be equal to one whole and 97 over 100. So we know that the nine is a tenth. So that nine means that I've got nine times 10 cents. A tenth is 10 cents in our money, right? So the seven is a hundredth. And if I divide one rand into a hundred equal pieces, I get a hundred cents. So I'm going to say this is seven times one cent. And our one rand is one times one rand. So in coins, for me to have one rand 97 cents, I have one rand coin, I have nine 10 cents coins, and I have seven one cent coins. Let's do one last one. Let's assume we've got five rand and 32 cents. This means that I've got five one rand coins. I've got three 10 cents coins and I've got two one cent coins. Okay. Next up, I want us to look at date format. So there are different ways that we write dates. If we are writing in South Africa, we would write a date using numbers only. We would write the date by saying um, 23rd of April, which is the fourth month of the year 2023. You can also write it as the 23rd of the fourth of 23. Okay. So what did we do? We said day first, then month then year. That is how we write dates in South Africa. In America, when they write dates, they swap around the day and the month. So if I was to write the same day, 23rd of April, in American, I would write it as 04 for the month. Then I would write 23 for the day. And then I would write 23 or let's write it out for the year. Okay, so there are two different ways of writing the date. The normal way or the way that we are used to doing it is day, month, year. The other way of writing it, as they do in America, is year, month, day. Okay, so what? let's look at some of the numbers that we experience when we are traveling. Um, Whenever you are traveling, let's say you're going on, a, on an airplane, if you're going on a cruise ship, in some buses, in some trains, what happens is that when you purchase a ticket, you get to decide where you are going to sit. And on your ticket is printed your seat number. The same principle applies when you are going to a hotel. So if you go to a hotel and then they give you a room and it's a specific room number. If you are living in flats or an apartment, your apartment has got a specific room, a specific number. So we are going to look at those numbers right now. So let's say that you are given room 307. This is not r the, the room number 307. The building does not th have 307 rooms. What this means is that it's going to be floor 3 and it's going to be door 7. So to find this room, you are going to go to the third floor and you're going to find room number 7. Let's say that you're going on an airplane, right? So on your on an airplane, you are going to have ticket number 32B. Our plane will have numbers going down, one, two, three, all the way down to, let's say, 40. And these are the rows. And then across, we've got seats 
labeled a b c d as many as there are and these go across so what we could do here is to find 32 b it means i need to go to row 32 and i need to find seat b that is the place so i go down to number 32 and then i go across to seat b so a quick summary of what we learned today we learned how to use the decimal comma versus the decimal point and we learned how to use the thousandth separator so when we are writing a number we will write 5000 with a space then 468 comma 37 and we use a comma in south africa the same number in america will be written 5 comma 468 dot 37 because they use a different convention they separate their thousand with a comma and they use a decimal point we separate our thousand with a space and we'd use a decimal comma the second thing that we learned was that this 37 actually means 37 over 100 it is three tens and seven one hundredths okay the next thing that we know that we looked at was how to write dates so dates in south africa is written as day month year and dates in america are written as month day year the third thing that we learned was when we are looking at floor plans or seat, seats for tickets we're always looking at the rows and the columns so if you are looking at uh, a hotel and you're looking for the floor you might be going to floor number eight and you're looking for room number 11 or if you are on a cruise ship and you are looking for your seat your seat may be seat um, in row number 23 and seat number e and that is what we learned today you should be able to do your homework based on this your homework is on page nine exercise one uh, thank you very much for watching please like and subscribe in order for you to get notifications for the next videos take care bye bye